Okay, everybody, big news again from Epic Games. I mean, this happens so frequently, it's awesome, but they've released a new version of Unreal Engine again, and there's a bunch of new improvements that I think are very applicable to my viewers and to me personally, a user of Unreal Engine, specifically for ArcViz type of stuff. So I wanna just watch the release video and talk about what some of this means, but also know that there's other improvements and we'll look at some of them in the release notes, but there's lots of little improvements about things that just weren't working before. Like, for example, there's new compatibility things with Nanite, with Lumen, and with the Path Tracer. All things that are super important to good rendering inside of Unreal Engine. And as you guys know, not all versions are in early versions of those tools. Not everything was compatible with them, but they continue to improve them and expand them. There's also some big improvements on Lumen Reflections. We'll look at some of the release notes on that. But let's jump into the video and see how it applies to the things that I think are pertinent to me. Okay, so I'm just going to look on the release page for Unreal Engine 5, their blog, and we're just going to check out the video showing some of the highlights of the new release. Unreal Engine 5.3 brings wide-ranging improvements to existing core UE5 features, as well as introducing some exciting okay, new so experimental feature sets that extend the potential for more creative workflows directly in the Unreal Editor. With sparse volume textures, you can store and playback fake simulation data for volumetric effects such as cool smoke thing. and They've fire. Abilities for volumetric SCTs can be simulated can be in Niagara elsewhere. or imported from OpenVDB files created in other 3D applications. And for cinematics, films, and other linear media, you can now use the Path Tracer for high quality volumetric rendering. Okay, and that's awesome too. So you can you can take your volumetric simulations, you can even import them from other 3D software. And the cool thing is it can actually be rendered with the path tracer which is awesome because we know the path tracer is fully capable of photorealistic rendering so photorealistic rendering plus physically accurate volumetrics awesome including global illumination shadows and scattering orthographic rendering is also now supported as an experimental feature offering stylistic camera choices for games and visualization Okay, so I have a lot of questions about this. I need to read more about the notes, but orthographic rendering, I mean, that could mean like straight on elevations, but I wonder if it could also mean vertical lines, you know, camera correction for all of our our renderings. That would be pretty awesome if it has, if it can help us out in that realm. That's something that ArcViz artists have been complaining about for a long time. I'm not sure that's what this is, but it's worth looking at. And definitely orthographic views in general is something that architects and ArcViz artists might want to use, correct? I don't know if it solves our other problem, but maybe. It's available in the Unreal Editor and at runtime with support for most UE5 features, including Lumen, Nanite, Shadows, and Temporal Super Resolution. Next up, an experimental new skeletal editor provides you with a variety of tools for working with your skeletal meshes. Yeah, this is including cool, the ability I don't know to if it paint applies to your rates. average ArcViz project. Another experimental feature set introduces a new cool panel too. cloth editor that delivers better looking simulations and adds support for a non-destructive cloth simulation workflow where you can trade off speed for precision. Cloth can also now be simulated and cached in engine using the NL. I can't believe all the stuff that on the Unreal virtual Engine production front in preparation for the next generation of LED production stages, we've added experimental support to in so display cool. for SMT ST2110. This lays the groundwork for a range This obviously is like way beyond the typical ArcViz project. This is for uh what do they call this? I don't know, but it's like real-time visual effects happening while filming, right? Super cool. Virtual production. I, I think this stuff is amazing, but it's a little bit over my head. Bunch of hardware configurations that open up new possibilities for LED stages, including having a dedicated machine for each camera frustum, maximizing the potential rendering resolution, increasing frame rate, so and rad. allowing for more complex scene geometry and lighting than previously possible. We've also added a new Cinecam rig rel actor 
that enables filmmakers to emulate traditional camera movement along. Okay, so I'm not a filmmaker, but if I'm making an archivist film, I have used camera rigging in Unreal Engine before, and it's cool. This is this is way beyond what they've had before, and uh, super cool. Like a camera could ride along a rail, and when doing archivist animations, actually trying to follow what would be a physically like accurate way of moving the camera like on a dolly or a rail adds that little bit more realism in in archviz we have a tendency to fake things that could never actually happen and that just makes our animations look fake so i would recommend trying to mimic actual real movements that a real life camera would be able to make it's better and so having a, a cinema camera rig rail in here is uh, pretty cool something I'm definitely going to check out. Control points along the path and supports both in editor and VCAM workflows. Talking of VCAM, you can now browse takes directly on the iPad for review or re-recording. Simultaneously stream different output for different team members and record at a slower frame rate for easier capture of fast moving action. Awesome stuff. And last but not least, you can now leverage additional CPU and memory resources when cooking content. These are just some of the highlights of what's new in Unreal Engine 5.3. You can find out more on our What's New page, where you'll also find a link to download the release if you're a new user. Otherwise, it's available right from your Epic Games launcher. Enjoy! Okay, awesome. Let's check out some of those, those new features on the release page. Okay, so on the release notes page, you can see that they're hyping up the same stuff. Refinements to core UE5 features. Okay, so this is mostly talking about, for me, it's talking about, you know, Nanite improvements, Lumen improvements, and path tracing improvements. Those are the big things. Also, the substrate material might matter to people too. That's getting more compatibility, like with the path tracer, which is cool. And that's like that, um, that's like a car shader is the way I see it used mostly where it's got the underlying reflective fleck to it with, with gloss over it. And it's that kind of shader. Um, and then the volumetric rendering, cinematic quality. So volume, this volumetric simulations working with the path tracer is a big thing. And then the orthographic rendering. So it's showing it exa an example of an orthographic view where it is vertical, but it's actually a true, so it's not... What I want it to be able to do is to take perspective and make it only one point or two point perspective, not three point with verticals going in perspective too, right? I don't know if I can do that or not. Something we're testing out. Okay, the rest of these things are the things we saw in the video. Let's go to the release notes. There's a couple other things here which I think are cool. So we talked about the rendering stuff. A lot of it's pretty technical, but this is something that we will all understand. Lumen can now support multiple reflections or reflection bounces when the hardware ray tracing is enabled with hit lighting. Okay, so you can get more accurate reflections and avoid black reflections where the bounces just stop. So any improved reflections in Unreal Engine is welcomed by me because I think that's been a huge deficit that it has when it comes to doing ArcViz renderings, right? So especially if you can do it with the Lumen reflections because that will be much closer to real time. Path Tracer, obviously, it can get good reflections already. Okay, so it's saying they fixed, they're, they're integrating orthographic, cool. They're trying to achieve parity between perspective and orthographic projections, meaning it's like orthographic works, but not necessarily all the features work, but they're trying to get that up to speed. So Lumen, Nanite, Shadows, TSR, all will work in either so that whether you're in orthographic or perspective, it looks the same. Great. Look forward to testing that out, like I said. The path tracer is getting improvements, including being able to render volumetrics. Substrate materials now supported with path tracer. This is the substrate material. This I think could be important, need to test it out, but lights with ray trace shadows can now optionally shadow volumetric fog. You can enable this with the console variable R volumetric fog, inject ray traced lights, which is off by default due to performance costs. Okay, so sometimes as ArcViz artists, we don't care so much about performance because we might may not be exporting as intended as a real-time navigable thing we're trying to get render renderings or cinematics out of it so this is something we might want to use if we want true volumetric shadows 
that's definitely something we would be used to in like V-Ray, for example, right? And there's another interesting point here. Spot point and rectangular lights can now set their intensity units to EV exposure value, which means you can set intensities in relative stops or power of two increments. Nanite working better with landscape objects now. Okay, so a lot of the problems that I've been encountering when trying to do ArcViz in Unreal Engine, they're, they're starting to address, like, all, especially with Nanite and Lumen, which are kind of new and awesome, by the way, but not always compatible with everything else. And the same goes for the Path Tracer. And those are things that I definitely want to work with all the features of Unreal Engine. So with each version, it's getting better and better. There's some minor updates to the procedural content generation, which I've shown in other videos, which allows you to create large landscapes. And what they've, the way I understand it, what they've done is made it so that the grid that it creates things based on can vary in size throughout a single landscape or throughout a single PCG graph, as the way I understand it. Haven't tested it yet. But that means you could have more dense objects creating like on the ground, and then above that you could have different, a different size grid creating and placing trees, things like that. Anyway, they, like I said, I haven't tested it, but they're talking about it just making it way more efficient to create large landscapes procedurally using essentially what we would call scattering. Okay, so that's it for the rendering stuff. The last thing I wanted to look at, there's some there's some modeling updates, which I don't know many people in my industry that are modeling directly within Unreal Engine. Maybe in a pinch you would want to, but they continue to make improvements to that workflow. There's even UVW tools in here and things like that now, which is pretty cool. Anyway, you can check out the release notes for some of that stuff, the modeling stuff. Here's some of the UV tools in beta. Okay, and one last thing which I think is cool, down in the engine content and templates part of the release notes. Check this out, collaborative viewer templates using enhanced input. Okay, so this is something I've wanted to explore a lot. As someone who works with architecture, one of the big things that we do is, you know, we do a lot of virtual meetings now, right? And we have a lot of virtual walkthroughs of buildings. What if we could combine those two and just have a meeting inside of our virtual building where, you know, the architect is in one location, the client is in another, but we can both meet up and walk through the building together, comment, get feedback, and then go back based on that feedback and make changes to our virtual model. To me, that's obviously the future of where all this is going, like living in Ready Player One mode, right, where we just meet inside of our project, our virtual project. This template is, you know, that is the framework for how that would work. There's a client viewer and a server host and wherever they are in the world, in theory, they can meet together inside the same virtual project. Okay, so I have not tried this out yet, but the fact that it exists is awesome and it's definitely something I need to test. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind, another thing that I need to experiment with. So many things, so much technology. But anyway, those were the highlights of what I saw with the release notes of Unreal Engine 5.3. Again, constantly making improvements to this software and to the workflows that, that are meaningful and useful to me. So I love Epic Games for that reason. Anyway, I'm excited to check this all out. Make sure to subscribe. I've, got, I've actually got a couple Unreal Engine things coming in the next little while with the project that I've been working on. So subscribe, stay tuned, and I will see you in the next video.